bear not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and tell my people their transgressions and the house of Yaakov, Jacob, their sins. Blow ye the trumpets in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of Yahuwah, Yahweh, is at hand. Your mouth is a trumpet. Blow ye the shofar. Amen. Good evening. I'm very happy that you tuned in tonight and so grateful to our Father that we are still in the land of the living. And if you turn the dial, you know what a TV is. You, your ears are working, your eyes are working, and you have a desire to hear what Father is saying. Well, on this program tonight, maybe it's because you know that I pray. Well, you know, I'm going to talk about, I think I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, widows because I've been looking again at um, some, I've been, well, I'm a widow myself, and my sister uh, lost her husband uh, this year. And, uh, you know, I see that many widows or widowers go through some of the same things. Many times we think that, with some of us, we think people really look out for widows. And some people do look out for widows, but not always. It appears in some cases that they really try and try to get the, the, the widow's money. Or in other cases, just the compassion that you, you think is there, you know, might not be there. And uh, I, I, uh, Psalm 68. Psalm 68, verse 3. Five says, our, our father is a father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows. And in other books, it, it may say it a little bit different, but when I saw the mention of widows, then it tells me that that father is, is looking out for the widows, for the orphans. He said, for those in jail, for those that are sick, for those that are oppressed. And it didn't say that you had to get to know him in these instances, but it says that I was in jail and you came to see me. I was sick and you, 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 you came to help me. I was homeless and you helped me with food and clothing. And I was a widow, and you brought me food. You, you, you uh, looked out for me. You checked on me. You called me. But I hear some awful stories where widows are fighting, it, families fighting to get some chair, some this, that the widow is clinging on to because it's the chair that her husband sat in. And I'm saying, what's, look at these, look at this, these people. Or a widow has uh, a, a home she was in that was, uh, uh, that was her husband's home, but it was understood by her, her husband that if something happened to him, the parents would never evict the daughter-in-law. But the daughter-in-law had discerned something. And, and, and she told her husband, if something happens to you, your family's not going to let me live here. Well, it's true. It happened. Something happened to him. And the, the, what last I read is that they, she was going to have to move from that house and they planned to sell it. I mean, there are so many different stories. But Father says to me that he will take care. Now, I'm a witness in my own personal life 
where I may see where, of course, people have done little things, you know, and I know people get your money. Or they figure you're a widow, and then they figure they read a little bit of something, they think you got something, so they really to borrow some money from you. I'm going, are they for real? I mean, I may be going to live 20 more years from now. But here's the, the beauty of being in Father, you all. Because we are praying for those of you, if you've tuned in, no matter what, if you lost a loved one, this applies to you anyway, although I'm talking about widows. This is a painful transition in anybody's lives if you love the person that has vacated the premises or have gone on to heaven, we believe, if they knew the God of Israel. It is the, the compassion is dying out in many instances, but I can only speak for myself. And I think our Heavenly Father, oh, <coughs> oh boy, just a minute. In my, in my case, my husband, my husband was a, a man who loved his neighbor as himself. A dem he would demonstrate that love. He didn't just sit around and say, I love my neighbors, because dad was not one for expressing verbally. He was one that showed his love. So therefore, um, I don't want to use this man's name yet, but here a, a neighbor came, and this is for somebody, some widow, some fatherless, motherless, somebody that you, you, you got stuck with your grandchildren, so to speak. And you don't know where certain monies are coming from. Father got all of that. We just have to believe it. Well, here comes this man to my door with a cake in his hand and, uh, this, uh, and said to me, uh, don't worry about your lawn. Never met my husband because he said, I never met your husband, but I heard such wonderful things about him. So he says, uh, I'm, uh, don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to cut your grass for the whole summer. Don't worry, you won't have to do anything. And I understand your husband had a garden. So don't worry about your vegetables. I will bring you vegetables the whole summer. And that's exactly what that neighbor did and continued to do. And you find other people will help you that you didn't even ask for help. In the scripture, we see where Father, uh, these scriptures are for you, and they're for people like me, where it talks about that widow woman all the time, and how she didn't have money to pay her debt, but just a little bit of food to eat. Y'all heard the story. But now I get to hear all these other stories, that she had a little food, a little meal or whatever it is, just for her and her son. And along comes a prophet and asks her for her last meal. Father has asked some of you to do something. And it's a sacrifice and you're afraid because you're looking at your, your bank account. It's got hardly nothing in it. And you're looking at it, but you have to be more like that widow woman and say, well, you know I'm going to die anyway. So I'm just going ahead and give them, fix this food for this prophet. But in this day and age, people don't even recognize the prophets when father sin. They don't, try to, they don't try to be doing stuff like that and give the prophet something. Hallelujah, it depends. But this woman did this. And you know the story because she was obedient. And father won't you be obedient. He's, He's giving you instructions, and he's telling you what to do because, because he's a father for the fatherless, a mother for the motherless, and he's a husband for us. And when I, when I went to him and I said, I, you know, I need some muscles to help me. And the father said, well, I made all these muscles. I can send what you need. Just, you know, depend on me. So I, I want to encourage you. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a, a story in here about a widow woman needing something, and she went to this man that, you know, he wasn't really into father, 
But that widow woman was persistent. She didn't give up. She kept knocking. I'm coming because I need so-and-so. And because she was persistent, that man got up and gave that widow woman what she, what she needed. And, and so, widow, father got you. Widow, father is going to take care. Father's going to take care of you. Hallelujah. Father's going to take care of you because the, the, the enemy would like to take you down, but he can't do that because Father has got you. Hallelujah. So we, we, the being persistent and hearing Father's word and these stories, some of these widows, all of a sudden they find that they have an affliction in their body. Not all the widows, but all of a sudden they have, they have cancer or they having uh, um, uh, something is wrong with, with, uh, with uh, their, 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 their blood pressure or they got diabetes and it's just, you name it, just all kinds of stuff. Or the children don't want to have nothing to do with them and the children turn against them. But Father told you and gave you his word that he would take care of you. Hallelujah. He'll take care of you and that he will give you a drink. He'll give you a drink when you are thirsty. We, we, our Father is always doing things in a supernatural, wonderful way. In the Word, it says, Messiah said, this woman wasn't a widow woman at the, at the uh, well. But he told her, uh, he wanted to give her a drink. And she said, you know, you don't have nothing. She, I'm paraphrasing. You don't have, 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 have nothing. Uh, and Messiah says, you know, this water, I have the drink. Because he, I'm sorry. He asked her for a drink of water. And then Messiah told her that he had the water, the, the living waters that would spring up into eternal life. Go and get your husband. And so... Then uh, she says, I don't have a husband. The Messiah said, yeah, you're right. You had five and now you don't have any. And so then I would like to think that you take the word of our God and when he brings it to you, I like to think that you drink it thirstily because that's what the word is about. It's about removing the impurities out of the way. And so you take the, you take the top, you let the Father, this was, represents sin. And so you get rid of that because you just confessed. And then Messiah is standing in front of you. And the Messiah is saying to you, I have this water that I want you to drink. And I want you to drink this water because this water will refresh you. This water will heal you. This water will strengthen you. This is the living waters and out of your own heart will flow rivers of living waters. And so we want, we want to say, like we will say, I'm going to do this right in front of the camera. This, this is not water, but just think about this as being the water, the word that you have to drink down. You eat the word. And the word is an anointing that breaks all the yoke. It is living waters that, that, that will cause your thirst to, to go away. And you got to drink it like you're really thirsty. You got to drink it like this. And then you think, oh, my father. What the woman said at the well is never a man, never a man talked to me like this man. And this woman went running to tell everybody about this man because this is the word that takes care of the widows. Messiah saw a widow coming and the widow's only son was dead. And the heavenly father brought that man back to life so that he could go home with his mama. If you're a widow or a widower or a fatherless, motherless child, or whatever affliction you have, the word will never return unto you void. And you are, I know some people just think we're just talking. But this word gives you strength. You know, 
You, it says you can go without food for a long time, but not without water. And when Father gives you his water, it has the right kind of taste. And it has the, the right kind of quench. It's a, a thirst quencher. It, it delivers you from, from sinful thoughts, sinful ways, sin, sinful reactions, and sinful actions. Now, I, 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 you know, there are so many uh, people in the scripture that Father is using to tell you that he's going to take care of you. Hallelujah. But he said, daily, you need to eat my word. Daily, you need to drink. Thirstily. Let it just hang out. Let it just go all through your system. Sin will not be allowed to come back in. The widows are here. We are not only to look out for the widows, we are to look out for the people that are in jail. We are to look out for those that are wounded in spirit and they are not in jail and they are not widows yet. They are just hurting people. Father, Father helps hurting people. Hallelujah. And so I just thank our Heavenly Father. I hope when you... When you're drinking, you know, your water you drink today, or whatever you have in your hand to drink, I am praying that Father would anoint it so that it just flows all through your system and that you would think about the word of the living God of Israel and that that word is water. Father gave you his word. I'm just talking to your spirit that no matter if the trouble comes and, and the water comes up to your your ankles, or it come up to your knees, or it come up to your, your shoulder, it's still not going to overflow you. In other words, the Father will help you in any, no matter what you are going through. I know we say it all the time, but it's true with all these people in the scripture and the people you see on television, and you still see in miracles on TV where cars are wrecked and the people get up and walk away because the God of Israel word is here to help. Widow, the Father God, it just keep praying. Keep praying and just, but pray and then speak it. And then say, I know our Father is going to take care of us. You say it's not that simple. Well, you have to keep saying it until you totally believe it. Now, because Harvey loved Father, and I love Father. This, how about this neighbor still in my life? How about this? He tilled our garden. That Harvey, I'm not a gardener. He tilled the garden so that I could go out there and plant and help me to plant so that I could, so that I, I just felt so good because some tomatoes came up, some okra, but he, he took me to the, he took me to the store and helped me to pick out the vegetables. So widows, father is looking out for us. Widow, widowers, father is looking out for us. Fatherless, motherless, father is looking out for us. Orphans, no matter what, blind, you can't see, you can't talk, whatever. Father has put in his word. And this is why I love the God of Israel. And I guess as I'm just talking here, but. I just want to encourage you because there's so many awful stories. And sometimes I see where people say, pray because I don't have money to pay my, my uh, light bill. So I got to wait for my whatever. And I'll see people saying, bless you, we praying. Bless you, we praying. And they should say that. So I'll say sometimes, well, why aren't they sending them something? And maybe they are. But Father got you covered. The... Uh, uh, when Father told you in Psalm 23 that he's your shepherd, he meant, he meant it. He meant it. And, and, and uh, Psalm 27, which was one of, one of my husband's favorite uh, psalms, it says, when your father and mother forsake you, I will take you up. Father takes care of the widows. And, and I'm proof of that. And, and he helps you to make good decisions. And I, I can only, I'm not going to go into detail, but I had 
had gone to one bank because I wanted, I wanted certain things put a certain way. And so they didn't do what I wanted them to do, but I thought they was just not helping me as a widow. They was just, they, 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 they dragged their feet. But guess what? Father had those people dragging their feet so he could, he could take me to the, 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 the bank that was going to take care of everything that I wanted in a better way. So when I came away from all those different banks, whatever, then the father showed that he was working. Everything had to go through a process. And so I know I'm not going into detail, but my point is, is everything that looked like bankers might not be helping you, but it may be father not having them help you because he want to guide you to the people that he desires to help you. Well, anyway, can't go into details about my life here, but he will not let you starve. He's not going to let you go without. I heard you say, but you did go without. Well, Father, working on it, that's my point. No matter what it is, he's working on it. So, so widows, all I can say is uh, another thing I did notice is that a lot of the widows were grieving. I mean, 10, 10 years, 12 years had gone by. And, and they still, they say they want to go. They want to go and, and, and be with their husband. So I, I would see this and then I would post and I would say, just remember, your husband will not be your husband. I want to say if you're not saved, I don't know where you're going, but, but I don't say that. I just say, that's it. You don't need to try to get out of this world. You're not going to have that life again you had with your husband. We're not going to be physical with them like we here on this earth. They have been transformed. So sometimes I will say by myself, I say, well, I pray to see my husband again, but then he will be my brother. And so I said, so when we see our husbands, we will be seeing our brothers and our co-workers. I'll, I'll say it like that to try to help them to see the point that you don't need to go try to do anything to yourself to get out this world. That life is gone. It's over. It's not going to come again with that particular man. And your father bless you to be married to someone else. You are blessed. Hallelujah. No, listen, I know somebody said, I'm not looking for nobody. Harvey broke the, the bowl and everything else. Hallelujah. I'm married to the God of Israel. And so you need to be married to the God of Israel. Let him take care of you. Let him provide for you. Let him move you around from place to place if that's his will. So when you're drinking, when you're drinking from this word, when you're drinking in the strength, it's, it says in Psalm 92 and 1 thereabout, it says that you will still be fruitful in your, in your old age. I don't know what old age is even even though I'm up there, I, I like to think old age is, uh, you know, maybe 120. Excuse me. Maybe 120. Psalm 92 verse, uh, I think it's the latter part in there where he says he's anoint your, he anoint your, uh, your, your uh, I think they anoint you. Let me see. Oh, those that be planting the house, they shall bring forth fruit. It, it does say down here that the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a seed in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of Yahuwah shall flourish in the course of our Elohim, or our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that Yahuwah is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. Well, there's another place, but I don't know where it is right now where Father anoints us and, and keep us anointed and with fresh, with fresh oil. Hallelujah. And so when you have your drink in front of you and you drink in this word, you drink in, you drink in the, the word is spirit and the word is life. You could say, how do you drink in how do you drink in the spirit? Well, you eat the, eat, you, you're eating the word. It says you're eating the word of our father. So your eyes are looking. So to me, my eyes eat the word uh, when I'm speaking. My ears are eating the word. 
uh, and when I'm, I'm, I'm singing, it's like my whole body is rejoicing because I know Father's taking care of his widows. I know Father's taking care of you. Whether you're a widow or not, you don't have to be fatherless, motherless, just in pain of some kind. Father's right there on the scene. That's why I love him so much. So, but widows, dry up your tears. I know it's hard. Uh, look to the widows that you see are, are strong. They, 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 they're not appearing strong. They actually are strong, although they have moments too. And they have moments of reflections and things. So fix your eyes, because that's what I did. I started looking at those that have gone through this, and I'm saying, you know, it's no sense of me running around crying all the time. Hallelujah. Because that's not going to get you anywhere. He's not going to come back. So widow, widow women and widowers, let Father handle your business. Psalm 23 says he is your shepherd. And he, he will take care of you. He will be a husband to those that don't have husbands and a wife to those that don't have wife because there's wisdom in Father. And there's directions and instructions. And then there's knowledge that he gives to us and his great love will make a way for you. So dry your tears up. Stand up on your feet and let Father know that you know he's going to take care of you. I pray that he bless you right now and comfort your heart and take away the pain in your heart or, or, or so that you can be comforted, so that you can come on and, and live your life and work on your legacy because your name is going to be called. And one day you're going to step out of this world into another realm. So I pray that this has been a blessing. Father's looking out for you, Psalm 68, verse 5. You know, just look at that and just let Father know uh, uh, what your needs are, which he already know. But dry your eyes, dry your tears, and walk in the light and the glory of our Father. And let him be the husband to you, or the wife to you, or the father to the fatherless, and mother to the motherless. I may not have shared a whole lot, but I know some widow heard something here that will encourage you and cause you to walk in strength and to know that you have a legacy that you will leave behind. What will people say about you when you are no longer in this world? Will you leave behind love? Will you leave behind a legacy that will help somebody move forward into great strength? Thank you. I pray you tune in again. Shalu, shalom, Jerusalem. Remember, pray for the peace of Spare Jesus. not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and tell my people their transgressions and the house of Yaakov, Jacob, their sins. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of Yahuwah, Yahweh, is at hand. Your mouth is a trumpet. Blow ye the shofar. Amen.